officer at Sound Bites 11. So that's awesome because when you're working at a small company, I totally can hear her. You are chief everything officer. You're your secretary. You're <laughs> the CEO. So you have to wear so many hats in a day. But personal branding and image have really become the buzzwords, especially from the last six to 12 months, these are the ones that are becoming really in focus. It is how you present yourself to the world. And we need to have effective personal branding to differentiate ourselves from the competition and allow us to build trust with prospective clients and employers. Sondri is an organizational consultant, business storytelling coach, a faculty, a mentor, a facilitator, a visual thinker, and a speaker. She helps leaders and teams drive business outcomes, build a personal brand, and be more human at work through storytelling. And when she's not working with clients and on calls with her family or friends or reading books, you'll find her at a tennis court or working on a pottery wheel. Welcome, Sondri. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you so much, Sukirti, and the entire team at Sipping Thoughts. I'm absolutely excited to be here. And what an amazing experience and platform that you're creating. I'm like so thrilled to add and be part of your group and your platform. I have been listening to a few of the episodes over the last year, at least I must say, from the time uh, Nija mentioned about your platform to me. and. I heard Hema's episode last uh, episode. It was fabulous how you are able to draw the kind of conversation. So I'm very excited. Oh, so thank you so much. And for those of you who have not heard Hema Hathangari's presentation, please do go back and watch it. Very, very inspirational. I just loved it. So just putting a thumbs up out there. But I want to come back to now, you coach so many people. And what do you see that the biggest challenge, and we always come back to women, that women are facing? Yeah, yeah. You told about my big, hairy, audacious goal that I have, which is to help leaders and teams drive business outcomes, build a brand through storytelling and also through my coaching uh, practice. And I want to focus on one aspect of it, which is around how we are all trying to manage work and life now. And this has been our central theme for everybody over the last, like, say, two, three years. If it was always there before, in two, three years, it's definitely come more into the spotlight. And so a lot of the stories and the conversations are around how are you defining success for yourself? How are you managing technology? How are you looking at building support networks like, like this platform around you for at work, at home? How are you traveling or not traveling or relocating, changing your career track, you know, doing those zigzags in your career, literally? And how are you collaborating with your partner, if there's a partner, to figure out all this together? And I think in that, there's definitely that some bit of uh, women orientation that comes out because certain cultures have managed to figure it out slightly differently than certain other cultures. And that is coming really to the forefront now. And I'm thinking about, you know, just even in terms of building networks, say even at work. Um, I'm thinking about my own journey in the early 90s during my days with ANZ. I had to deal with a conflict between maintaining a relationship with a client and some of the credit norms and risk practices that the bank had. And in my style at that time, I was like, I said, okay, if I talk to the credit team, they're going to say no. So my initial path was to believe we couldn't organize those lines of credit for the client. So I kept mulling about it and, you know, I was stewing over the problem myself and I must have lost so many weeks of sleepless nights trying to figure out, you want to be there for the client, but you know, the bank has certain norms. And then finally, I did reach out to the corporate team, to the cash management team, to the product team and all. And they really worked together to make it happen within the credit rules, but they worked for the client. And I was just thinking, you know, why? I didn't I tap into my ecosystem sooner? They were all there. And we tend to sometimes do this solo journey. I think so with a lot of the conversations, it's about how do you build these networks around yourself? If you're a founder, how do you find a co-founder maybe who has complementary skill sets? What do they bring to the table to what you're willing to let go and so on and so forth? And I think these are the kind of things. And some of it, you know, in term, I was reading this Business Insider article about some people who chose to be stay-at-home dads during the pandemic. And the way they framed the conversation was very different from what you might hear 
when a say when a, a woman, woman does it. <laughs> So I mean, I'll just say, read out a couple of sentences. He says, I felt an urge to spend more time with my family when my son was young. And when my twin daughters were born, the desire became even more stronger. I can see the rewards are visible. I, I don't know if I'll go back to the corporate world. I love where I am. And I advise parents to enjoy your kids and make memories. You have the rest of your life to work. And I was just thinking, I have never heard and you know any woman who took a break from work frame it that way we so end, i think we need to learn to learn here and see but when you work in hong kong and but do you see these issues being global or are they the same everywhere you know i want to say at some level people are the same everywhere uh, and i used to say this even for you know when we were talking about uh, say b2b sales business to business sales when you go to a client call ultimately there's a person at the other end so you're connecting with the person. So always our connects are with the person. Having said that, each location, and you, I know you've lived and worked in different parts of the world, and I'm sure a lot of our audience as well have. Each location brings its own nuances. I mean, one of the things when I came into Hong Kong was, of course, the language. You Cantonese does open a lot more doors for you than otherwise. And I remember going into my initial meetings with clients, you have to give your visiting cards with two hands and you like wait for the client to just, you know, you are doing those uh, social conversation, chit chat or whatever to get to know the client. And they would just cut to the chase and say, okay, tell me what do you have to offer? What is the pricing? And you're not sometimes <laughs> prepared for it. <laughs> no, I totally agree. I, I used to travel a lot to Finland and, you know, we as Americans are used to so much chit chat. They'd be like, all right, open the laptop. Let's start working. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I can see uh, Dr. Vandana talking about local <laughs> culture, exactly that. Uh, how do you then localize and customize? So you yeah, want to customize to your audience, but you need to localize. I was running this session on uh, business storytelling, which had a whole bunch of HR folks attending from different organizations. And I used to, I mean, all of us love Steve Jobs as a great storyteller, right? So I was giving a couple of examples for Steve Jobs and all that. And after the session was over, somebody from a telecom company here, he walked up to me and he said, you know, Soundri, I really get it. He's an inspirational person. We all look up to him. But are there any local leaders that are equally as inspirational? And that was, again, a, a moment for me. I took a step back and actually started curating stories and created this video series called Handshake. That is back when the time you could shake hands mm -hmm. uh, and talking about how people could connect through stories and got a lot of local leaders involved in that program. Fantastic. So, so tell so us now why personal branding and why is it becoming such a catchphrase? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, why don't I segue into getting some of our audience also linked in into this? So I'm going to take a minute and just uh, get my screen uh, open. So just give me a minute. And I would like uh, until you get your screen open, I'd love to hear from the audience. What do they think is personal branding and image? You know, it's a good question to throw out because I think we're hearing this word everywhere these days. And so I would love to hear from all of you. What, what your thoughts are on personal branding? Is it bragging? Is it being too out there? Yeah, so that's exactly what we're going to do in this thing. So I've just put up a, it's a it's a polling thing called menti.com. So you can just either go and type menti.com and type the code that comes in, or you can scan the QR code. I think the code is getting hidden a little bit. So okay, hold on one minute. Is this better now? No, the top part is getting a little bit hidden. So I think the code is three. I, I can't I can't read it because oh, the, you mean the code in. number. The code number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's eight eight four zero. I'm just gonna if type you can it. Help me just type type it on the chat. Eight eight four zero. Zero four zero two. And this is Mentimeter, M E N T dot com. Menti dot com. Ah, I I see what you're meaning. Mm. Yes, we are not able to see the, the top the link. Yeah. Yeah, I can just move to the actual question. So, but so the first question that I want to hear from the audience, and I know we probably have a very diverse group uh, participate. What is the first word that comes to your mind when you hear about personal branding? If you can just type in a word. So 
So we are hearing Sneha is saying communication. Pragya is saying consistency. And Natasha is asking me to repeat the code. The code is 88400402. Ashmita says image. Kritika says positioning. Dr. Vandana says values. Amita says confidence. I love it. It's a whole series of it. Um, if the if people are typing on the thing, then we won't get the word cloud yeah. here. So I'll just, uh, oh, it's coming up now. Uh, so Kirti I mean, says who you are and how you present yourself to the world. I love that. Smithy uh -huh. says creating a positive, Smitha, sorry, says creating a positive personal image. Akshita, selling your strengths or expressing it impressively to stand out from the crowd. Lovely. Amita says creating you. Right. I think we're getting a lot of it on the chat. So I'm just going to move on to a next question. Again, you can put it back on the chat if you don't want to do it on this. Uh, but I want to know your feel on about some of the statements that are associated the, with yeah. personal branding. I think you're getting something on top of your uh, computer screen. There we go. So uh, uh, Rashik says unique story. Very nice. Right. So let's ask so, all these questions and maybe they'll just yeah. tell us right here whether they agree or disagree. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, what is your feel? And these are some of the statements which we typically hear when we talk about personal branding. Personal branding is for leaders. So let's take personal a three and let's, let's like, like, yeah. People yeah, are putting like it. Self promotion. Personal branding dilutes the company brand. Personal branding means grooming. So these are some of the things that we hear. So I can see, you know, again, a lot of it coming out on uh, on the screen for Menti. Skewed towards, yes, it seems to be for leaders. I'm very happy to see the lowest scores on the self-promotion because it's not about self-promotion in my mind. So I'm happy to see that, those scores. And Pragya saying personal branding is for everyone. <laughs> yeah. I think Bikram had put his hand up, but um, maybe Bikram, you can type something on the chat for us. If you had a question personal branding is for everyone i like it pragya yeah thanks thanks Sriti, for pointing that out so you know we have our own but I, what, what is interesting here is that still people feel that personal branding means grooming etc hmm. so i totally i mean and this is something that i really am not into so i'm not an image consultant so that's something that we'll have to leave out of the purview of this session um, is a great I think it's a great role and great job it works for some people but I'm going to focus more on personal branding for you as a person as a wholesome thing not just about what you wear or what you uh, you know uh, how you pre physically present yourself grooming is a very small psycho subset absolutely now I'm just going to move on from here um, and for me personal branding is actually a lot more than this and it is not just on these uh, scores or these aspects for me it is about uh, a lot more uh, about what you are as a person and I'll tell you why um, it takes me back to my time at uh, my college in Chennai uh, which is Etheraj College so as a young college girl in 1988 so I'm dating myself um, when I was studying BCom, uh, one day, our head of the department, Dr. Nirmala Prasad, she walked into our classroom and she said, you know, Madras Management Association is having this big conference coming and I'm looking for volunteers. I immediately put my hand up and the conference was going to be in this place called Adya Park. It was called Adya Park at the time. It's Crown Plaza now. And it was a five-star hotel. And that was the first time I was ever going to get into a five-star conference room. So I went there with stars in my eyes, but my heart in my mouth. You know, and this was one of those first times I was seeing these plush carpets, huge chandeliers, chairs, just my bows tie hote hai, and that kind of thing. I was not called there to talk or be on a panel or anything like that. My job was very basic. Just help out the registration desk give out program details, ensure everybody has notepads and pens, you know, that kind of work. But I got a ringside view on hearing some of the industry bigwigs who are experts in the field. And I heard, and I still remember, I probably paraphrase her, Malika Srinivasan, who's the CEO of Tafe Tractors and Farm Equipment. She said, you don't need to have the love for money to run a business. You need to have a dream to build an institution. And I'm probably paraphrasing her after all these years, but that left a big mark on me. 
including wanting me to aspire to be on the cover of a business magazine. We all talk about gender pay gap a lot, but it's the network gap which really pulls people down and women disproportionately even more so. And for me, personal branding is a way to really bridge that gap. So I'm, I'm, going to... I'm just going to take a couple of uh, comments that are coming in. And I love what Lata is saying in Delhi, personal branding is having a BMW, a Merc or a Jaguar. <laughs> so that's great. She's bringing a bit of levity. Amita says personal branding is how to attain yourself wholeheartedly. And Ak- Akansha is saying that jungle mein more nache kisne dekha. You need to put things forth. Yes. Lovely. I love the, see, I love the analogies that are coming, the associations which are coming with the personal brand. So thanks. Thanks for all those comments. So I want to really go on to talk about, so what is brand, you know, and what do we, what do we think when we think about uh, brands? So what is, let's talk about it. And, you know, Sukriti, I'm going to ask you to help me with the chat again, uh, and I'll keep an eye on it as well. So what I what in your mind are some brands which come to you when I say brand, which are the brands which come to your mind and why do these brands stand out? So if you can share with us, Nike, Google, <laughs> Google and Zoom because I use them all right. the time. <laughs> Pragya says Apple, Pragya says Meta, very nice, ITC. Ashmita says Amul, Pragya says Tata, Hansa says Titan, Poonam says Tata, Madam. Very nice. Lovely. So I have a call, Ashmita you... says. Yeah, please Rashik keep it says Matanjali, Pragya says Zara. Nice. And please keep coming, coming on the chat, but also tell for me, why do some of these, these brands that you mentioned, why do they stand out for you? What's about the brand that stands out for you? Clear positioning, very nice Pragya. Presentation, attractive quality. Use them regularly. <laughs> I mean, I love Zoom. I tell everybody because I've tried all the different conferencing. It's the most easy to use. Uh, Dr. Vandana says Zomato. Ashmita says Amul because it's witty, it's contemporary, it's contextual. Smita says uh, because of its quality. Amita says attraction. Rashik says because of the story that they tell. Hmm, she's put a smile there. Lata says celebrity advertising. Interesting. Pragya Gulati says consistency in communicating the positioning. Hansa says Titan addresses social issues. Anushree says Apple because of status. Neha says sustainable and continuous engagement. Sneha Raseli says quality products. Asmita says Fevicol because of humor and quality. Amita says because of fame. Yeah, and please keep it coming on the chat. Value for money, quality, service, and presentation. Great, great. You know, please keep those thoughts coming on the chat. And, you know, if you think about why these brands stand out for you, is it the features? Is it the image? Is it just what they mean, the purpose that they stand for? And if you actually look at it from a very top level, for all these brands, the image is right. The message is clear and they appeal to the right audience. That is possibly the, you know, if you have to really club it all into one set of features. Please repeat those three things again so that we actually hone those in. That What are those three yeah. things that you just said? The image is right. The message is clear and it appeals to the right audience. So something that defines it and seeing that aspect of it, it draws you. And it creates a memorable positioning in your mind. So it also occupies a positioning in your wallet, the share of the wallet. And companies spend a lot of money doing this. So, to, you know, Jeff Bezos was, this is a very famous Jeff Bezos quote, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. I just want to twist it a little bit and say that your brands are the stories that people tell about you when you're not in the room. Today, if you think of any brand, if you think of Amul and the humor and all that, you're saying, you know, that ad that Amul did about uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock, what a great ad. You know, this is the kind of conversation that we will have. 
So it is not just what they say, but the stories that they say about you when you're not in the room. And I want to bring on a few brands. I know you talked about a whole lot of iconic brands. I want to just shift gears a little bit and bring on a few brands. And when I talk about the brands, I want you to write on the chat, what are some of the adjectives that come to your mind when you look at these brands? So the first brand that I'm going to talk about is Mumbai Police's Twitter account. And if you have noticed the Twitter account, the Twitter account started around December 2015. And two people who played a very key role in starting that account was Amar Javed, who was Mumbai's commissioner of police at the time, and Devin Bharti, who was the joint commissioner. And they were very clear that we want a branding which is not preachy. We don't want to police people into action, though we are the police. We want to find a way to use humor as a way to connect. So they got this big agency. Uh, Subu is a founder of that agency called Truvon. And some of the ads, were, like some of the tweets were iconic. People really started engaging with it. And maybe a few years back, they had about 5 million Twitter followers. It's probably 10 million now. You know, it's that kind of a thing. So when you think of Mumbai Police as a brand, what are some of the adjectives you will associate to this brand? On trend, absolutely. Trendy, eye catchers. Pandu. <laughs> absolutely. I used to live in Bombay, so you know that's responsive, must. I like that word, must. Totally, right? Mumbai. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So witty, yeah. So let's move on and look at a few quick such brands. Um, and this is uh, basically Malvika Iyer. What, Malvika Iyer, why do I, she was born in Kumbakonam in Tamil Nadu. Her father was transferred to Rajasthan when she was very young. She spent 13 years of her early life in Bikaner, Rajasthan. And she had a very happy, tomboyish, outdoor, uh, you know, playful kind of a life till 2002 when there was a horrible accident and she lost both her arms and she almost lost both her legs. It was a, you know, a ammunition depot which went uh, where the accident happened and the doctors weren't able to save her arms. They were just about able to save her legs. She had to go through skin grafting. It was like a long, tedious process of recovery. And this was around in December 2003. That was the time she was appearing for her 10th board exams. She had missed so much of the school, but she managed to stay in touch with her friends in Bikaner. They found a coaching center in Chennai and she had just three months to prepare. She studied hard and she got a state rank first among the one of the state toppers and she got a state rank among all the private students who attended. She was invited to Rashtrapati Bhavan to meet uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam. She went on to study social work. She got a doctorate in uh, social work. And today, other than the numerous speeches and other things that she has done, she's also was invited to co-chair World Economic Forum Summit. She works and she was invited in 2020 by the prime minister to handle his social media accounts, which was a rare honor, which was given to a few women. Now, when you look at Malvika Iyer as a brand, what are some of the words that come to your mind? Inspirational, perseverance. Not giving up, resilient, anti-fragile. Yes, Pragya. Great, brave heart. Absolutely. So, fire, commitment, amazing, yeah. And keep those thoughts coming. I just want to talk about, you know, one another person uh, or maybe a couple of others. So this is, uh, some of you might know about these people. Uh, some of you may not. These are Neetu Yadav and Kirti uh, Jangra, who are the founders of Animal. Now, both of them studied in IIT Delhi. And when they were there, they were roommates and they became friends. And they decided to really go beyond what they studied at IIT Delhi. And they started this trading app for trading animals in their uh, villages, in the remote places in UP and all that. That's where they wanted to be based. They started this. Now, everybody, when they started, everybody told them, 
ये क्या आई में पढ़ के अभी यू नो गाय बेन्स के पीछे पढ़ोगे वॉट आर यू डूइंग आई मीन इज दिस वॉट वी सेंट यू टू आई आई फॉर and these were her parents who were traditionally agriculturalists and farmers who still asked them these questions but they said this is what we want to do we want to be in our community and we want to make a difference so if you were to think about neetu and kirti as brands what are some of the adjectives that will come to your mind making a difference that they will nothing risk takers mavericks yes social just do it i love that and see we are associating some other brand to this brand because that brand also has a catchy uh, phrasing right out of the box thinking different league altogether lovely i love the choice of words and enterprising beautiful choice of words everyone go for it <laughs> Let's just turn a little bit and let's look at another brand. We all are used to looking at people who are like you know in all these lists, thirty under thirty, forty under forty, women icons and all that. I want to introduce a totally different brand. <laughs> This is forty-four year year old Ganga Devi Gujar. She is a partner with Cry in Ajmer, and she is one of the women icons who has been nominated for Women's Day coverage. she what is special about her really nothing in some ways but she did an amazing thing she took her 10th standard board exams at 44 and she went on to do it for a particular reason now she's not there in the list because she topped it with 99.99% marks or anything like that in fact she didn't even pass she's on that women's list because because of her three other young girls who were married young and who wouldn't have otherwise been able to take these exams took the exams the only reason those three other girls were able to take the exams whether the girls families allowed them to go to this board exam because ganga ma'am was on this journey with them so she said i will do the whole nine yards i'll go through all the classes i'll study with them and i'll go for the exams and what is also actually amazing is that all four of them failed <laughs> but they are determined to study work hard and pass next year so ganga is an icon because not because she decided to study at 44 which is itself is amazing but she did it for these girls she did it because these child brides who were there wouldn't have got this opportunity otherwise so if you look at ganga as a brand what is that adjective that comes to your mind catalyst age is just a number go for it change maker yes sukriti sacrifice smita yeah, says yeah. inspiration dr vandana says role model akansha says driving force neha says risk taker she seems so fierce also when i look at this picture i mean just looking at the picture she yeah. up right she now feels so determined right to make it <laughs> amazing i'm i mean there are so many such people like that but i'm just going to move on to ask you to think about all these people that we talked about we all have a brand even though we may not have thought about it and people look at us and they acknowledge and attribute some adjective to us you're called kind you're called knowledgeable you're called purpose driven competitive considerate poor in time management argumentative and sometimes some of these adjectives do more harm than good and hearing about yourself from others allows you to look at yourself from a different perspective so from our perspective we might be thinking we've done all the right things great work history i've got a great cv i've got the experience i've got good shoes whatever you know but our audience may not know that we are even there so when you look at from a branding perspective and i'm just going to you are the ceo of your own brand and the brand is me limited so what are the features you want to highlight who is the target audience you want to look at which of the features you want to highlight to your audience that becomes important and it could be employers it could be customers it could be your friends 
whatever it is that you want to what are your marketing efforts what are your outputs it could be your cv it could be a blog it could be a social media profile it could be what you wear and your body language too so there is that you know we talked about image being some part of it it is all that what you say and how you say it all this really drives your branding so just like you can actually navigate it you have a gaming controller and if you had a gaming controller and you can work your way through a maze like a game you can control your brand to arrive at the right image and i'm going to stop here for a minute and put myself on a spot so sukriti you are going to help me with the charts when uh, yeah uh, really really nice it should be me unlimited i love that lata i love that reframing i'm going to note that down me unlimited totally so when i talk to you when i talked initially and when i talked to you about uh, you know madras management association and my life uh, in the college what are some of the things that you thought about me as a person what are some of the adjectives that came to your mind and please feel free it's a safe group you could write anything you want yes as simple and humble <laughs> Akshita says confident. I would have said go get here because it's actually at that age it's very tough to raise your hand. Sneha says learner. Kritika says enthusiastic. Yeah. No. Thank you so much, uh, storyteller. Thank you, Vandana. I'm happy now. <laughs> so you know what happens if you when you actually uh... <laughs> oh thank you, Lata. <laughs> So what happens when you actually introduce yourself when you first meet somebody? What if I had instead of talking about that incident, I said, "I am Soundri. I'm simple and humble. I'm confident. I'm a go-getter. I'm a learner. I'm enthusiastic, and so on and so forth." I can't even bear to repeat it. But if what if I introduce myself like that? What is that going to make you think of me as a person? Hmm, pompous. <laughs> Pompous. Yes, absolutely. Narcissistic. Totally, totally. Boring. That uh, says. But a lot of the times, this is how we introduce ourselves, right? We give a list of credentials of who we are as a person instead of letting the audience find out about your character. So this is the first thing that I want to leave you with. When you introduce yourself, instead of saying what you do for a living. can you reframe and talk about some incident that happened which shows you for who you are as a person and that might require some digging some conscious thought to think about it and brand yourself but just think how much better it sounds so you let the audience derive an opinion about you by themselves you don't need to get braggy and say that the audience will relate and find out more about you they will get curious they will find out about you so never give a list of credentials you know that's boring nobody wants to hear a list of credentials think about even when you go on a work networking event say for instance don't say what you do for a living talk about the time when you made a difference at work and why you are connected to that job so just reframe that in your mind and use that as a way of introduction and that makes it so much more powerful and it lets the character come out on its own without you having to be pretentious about it so we so always say you know i'm going to ask a question here because usually when yes. you're at networking events the first thing everybody wants to know is which company you work for or what you're doing you know that's kind of like the the most obvious go to and even if you don't answer it they'll come back to that question yeah totally i i do want to know like anybody who is here i do want to know where they are but we are leading the conversation we have this unique opportunity to shape a perception of somebody about us yes the top line might be important but can you then go on instead of saying i've done this i've done this i've done this we all do a list of even our degrees right i i've done bcom i did cost accounting i did my mba and all that i mean instead of going into that list can you immediately say, do introduce yourself i am i am so and so from so and so you know few years back when i was working in the oil and gas industry something happened and that totally changed my perception about how we can make a difference from the environmental perspective which is why i now work at shell 
so I can go inside and be the change that I want to see. And I'm just giving an example. It could be for different industries and it come out very differently. And I'm, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more coming on the chat. Uh, so Kirti, so if there's anything, please flag it for yes, me. Yes, so no, Halima is also asking, Sundari, could you give us an example of introducing ourselves with a story? Yeah, so which is, which is just what I said, you know, just talking about what drives your passion to be what it is. So like, say for instance, even my ex example of the MMA story, which is why I'm committed to work on personal branding and help others create a brand for themselves because women are disproportionately ignored when they don't have a brand. It could be that I'm just rephrasing. I don't want to repeat that whole example again or what I said about Shell and why we are in, interested in energy conservation, why we are interested in the sustainability space. Right. So, so bring your why. As we will bring our why, we also need to know how do we pronounce your name correctly? Is it Sundari or Sundari? Soundary. <laughs> so in all their wisdom. I want to I want to dig a little bit deeper into that because I think that is where most people get perplexed. And when we think about it, these stories are also very short. They're not very really long in nature. Which is because we are at work. We are not at a bar with our friends that somebody will endlessly listen to us. You know, when, when you're busy at work, when you're having a high stake conversation at work, when you're like in a social setting, but from the work context, people have limited time. And we talk about this all the time. And one of the crucial things about story, three things, and I'll make it easy to remember, stories help in getting attention, cutting through the noise and help getting attention. Stories help in comprehension. So when you share a story about yourself, you never use complicated jargon. You never say things like, I'm interested in the hardware and the software of this and that and all that. You actually narrate an incident, which traditionally in a story format, we always keep it simple. We don't use jargons. So that helps with the comprehension. And more importantly, it helps with the retention. So if you have to remember, remember car, comprehension, attention, retention. And that's very important because you're not just introducing yourself as a person in a group. Maybe you're just, for example, when you're doing B2B sales and you're presenting, sometimes you're with a decision maker. Sometimes you're with somebody who's going to carry your story to a decision maker. You want that person to remember and retell that incident the same way that you told them. So you're leaving that footprint with them and stories help you do that. So Amita is asking, can you please give us an introduction in a nutshell? We would love to hear yours. Sure. So um, in the 90s, when I used to work with uh, ANZ, I, you know, I was doing my ma branch manager work and a lot of the work was around do my knowledge. But as I grew up in the organization, I more and more realized that it's all about people and engaging with the people. So when I started exploring, where can I work more in that area? I have a finance background. Where can I work more in that area? I came upon storytelling as a way to really create that engagement, create the connect, find a way to influence and inspire action. So my whole BHAG is about helping leaders and team do just that. Well, thank you. A quick version. <laughs> So Lata is saying uh, at a bar, everyone is talking and no one is listening. They only think everyone is listening. And Pragya says, I think networking is overrated and personal branding is underrated. I love all these reframes. I'm going to save the charts and read through them again later because I think there are gems of wisdom here. Um, there is no, and I always believe that there is nobody who's doing this or who's an expert. All of us are learners here. And which is also why I love your platform, because the audience really interacts and you learn so much from the interaction. So thank you so much for each and every comment. I'm going to definitely look through each of them again after the session as well. So Prasanna, if you have a question, please do write it down. And I don't know if we have time, but Sandri, can we ask somebody if they'd like to share their story? Would love to hear one if somebody would like to share theirs. Yeah, so sure. I'd like to hear your that. Hand. As we continue, we will unmute you. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. No, so I'm going to really move into a little bit of the toolkit part of it on how do you create your personal brand statement 
So normally if it was a workshop, we would have a lot more time and you can actually create it and send it and we can workshop it. I'm just going to give some top line things for you to remember. And the first starting point is about your brand values. So when you look at yourself, think of some three objectives. We wrote a lot of objectives about the people that we saw before. And you gave some amazing objectives for me, which I can use later. But think of three objectives which you want to embody for yourself and you want to shape how people perceive you. The two caveats I will always say is they should be true. It's not just an aspirational thing. They should be true because we are talking about who you are. It doesn't matter what else there is. And the other thing is it should be of value to you or your organization, depending upon what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're on your own, if you're a homemaker, you're working at an organization, you're an entrepreneur, it should be of value to you. Those, those key three words. So frame so those words. You have different ones for your organization and different ones for your personal life. I have the same ones because again, I believe that you bring your whole self into anything that you do. So if I say that my values are honesty, curiosity, uh, then that's going to be with me through. So you might pick and choose to highlight one of the values more in a certain context and in another context. But I think the core values pretty much remain the same and it need not it need not be restricted to three. It could be 10 core values that you have, right? Three is three is really small in terms of you. Nobody will have just three values. You'll probably have even 10 or 20 values that connect with you. Some of it will come to highlight in certain situations. Does that make sense, uh, Sukriti? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Pragya is sharing creativity, freedom and impact are the three values that she associates. Mm -hmm. But I like the fact that you're forcing us to drill it down to three or five. The reason being is otherwise we have such a huge list. And when we have such a huge list, it's very difficult to say then what is your brand? Because these brands that are, they're very purposeful and they can write their whole brand statement in two lines, right? Two lines, exactly. We are talking about three word brand statements, right? So we are almost looking at something like that. So what I want you to lead up and keep this aside, please keep it putting it on the chat, but keep this aside. And then I want to move out to you creating what is your billboard statement? What is that statement about you, which will call out, which will be that big thing, you know, spruce up the elements which define you, why people remember you and keep it engaging one of a, one of a kind memorable for you. Again, I'm bringing it back to what it is for you. So say, for instance, it could be, I want to be known for Dash so that I can deliver Dash. And the so that is important because it forces you to put yourself in an audience orientation. Otherwise, why should the audience listen to you, right? I want to be known for being a great friend so that I can be there with my friend and you know be kind be caring so you can use any of the object uh, adjectives that you use it can be in a personal situation it can be in a professional situation and i've already shared mine so i this is my personal brand statement i help and i want to lead with the helping because i think it's all about really about sh giving sharing and i see that happening today in the platform you know so much richness of information right sukirti uh, so I'm like going to go it. back I to help. the Please read thing. it because that would be nice, you know. Just go yeah, back and yeah. read it. Yeah, I want to be, so I'm just leaving it for, again, for people. I want to be known for Dash so that I can deliver Dash. And in my case, I help leaders and teams drive business outcomes. And this is important because people want to know why they need to engage with you. They need to engage because you're driving business outcomes and that orientation is for them. It's not what you do. It is how it impacts them. Build a personal brand and be more human at work through storytelling. So I'm bringing in what I bring to the table. I bring in the storytelling skill to the table. So I bring that in. So I want to bring highlight that. But I want to orient it from the point of view of the audience. What is it that the audience is looking for? And once you have these two statements, values and your thing, you can structure it to create your vision, impact, network, presence. And I'm just going to give a few examples uh, for like, you know, from my context on how do you define your expertise and build your skills? So my whole journey into storytelling, it was about knowing myself, what excites me, what bothers me, what people are saying you're good at 
and what you are able to do with minimum effort for maximum results and more importantly what gets you out of bed in the morning what really makes you get up and go and do that so think about it from that framing and then you have your values you have your brand statement that sort of is your narrative and your elevator pitch think about what are your points of difference and for me again you know in the storytelling thing whole thing i started talking a lot about storytelling everywhere on linkedin everything and as i start reading stories stand out for me everywhere all the ones examples that i shared today are all things that we might have seen very nice example for instance recently arnold schwarzenegger uh, did a video uh, showing his support to russia and that if you haven't seen is a classic excellent example of what storytelling is on starting with the why of why people should listen to him he talks about his time in russia and the connection and all i won't describe it now you should listen to it as an and he really brings that in so then people start what was happening with me is that the more i talked about it people started tagging me on all storytelling posts my friends started whatsapping me and giving me and just like now how we have such a sharing community people started pointing content to me and without having to do much i was getting content also coming my way and i was learning in the process right today we are in an information overload place right content is rich but i was getting curated content coming my way because people knew i was going to i'm working on it so cut out the jargon and look at how can you really maintain a consistent image so keep it to your thing about the values are consistent whether you are at work or in person and we talk about bringing whole self to work and all these all become jargons otherwise if you don't tie those two in and for people who are looking at entrepreneurs or people who worked in corporate who have taken a break you're going a, today into another role into a new entrepreneurship space reintroduce yourself because maybe people know of you in a certain avatar now you are this metaverse avatar today it's so people need to know what's what the difference saying. because today our images are also defined by what we write on linkedin and what we write on instagram and the way that we present ourselves in the metaverse which is very very basic right now but it's uh, or even the picture that we choose to represent ourselves totally so everything is part of branding it's a full package and i'll talk a little bit more about it as we are going along and come and share yeah, your point of view yes uh, that uh, P. Radhakrishnan has asked, typically when you start with exchanging business cards, let us say I'm working in an industry, say start is I am passionate about XXS industry, that is why I'm here. How does it help in building the brand you are? Because you're trying to, you know, if you go to a networking event and glad you brought that example, then you're getting a wad of cards, right? And you're coming back with a wad of cards in the days where you were meeting people and getting a wad of cards. Today, it's all immediate LinkedIn requests going. And people then go through, if it is LinkedIn or a visiting card, people then go through. So now when you have 10 people coming and introducing themselves and talking about, I'm so-and-so from so-and-so, I'm so-and-so from so-and-so, I'm so-and-so from so-and-so. Just that one line where you used your personal passion to say what drove you makes you stand apart. You trigger a curiosity in the other person and you say, oh, let me go and look up that person on LinkedIn. And then you go and do that. Then you connect in the conversation. And this has happened so many times to me. Um, I was on other platform sharing some information about we were having a chat on uh, taking ownership. I posted this on another group saying, you know, I'd like to hear from HR folks. What are your thoughts on it? How is it working for you in the organization? And I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one messages coming because people say, oh, this person is doing this work and that sounds interesting. And you're asking a question on how it relates to their work. You're not saying I'm the, you know, I'm the person who knows it all and who's come here. You're saying, how is it relevant to your work? And they want to share. When you ask people question, they want to talk about themselves. They want to share. Then do you listen? And that is becoming a difficulty these days, definitely like say in this platform now with so many chats coming, sometimes maybe you don't, which is why I'm requesting a download of the chat for me to go back later and actually look at it. And if you consciously take that time and look at connecting, and I'll talk again a little bit more about it. Now come and share your point of view and worth. And I see this chat is buzzing. 
so obviously people are creating a brand for themselves right here right you are really looking at your mind you're not thinking you're not feeling judged you're not thinking do i have a point of view to say should i share it here all those you know negative affirmation <laughs> are all gone you come and say this is what i feel and you're being yourself and maybe i didn't do a lot of this when my initial stages at work i did put my head down a little bit more and kept on working but now the times are different right now even whether you're in your starting stage of work or not it's nice to have a voice and as employees we are talking about you know gallup poll talked about uh, 20% of the employees only being engaged and one of the things that drives engagement is whether your voice is being heard in the organization so for your voice to be heard you need to raise the voice as well and not go so much with all these vanity metrics again i'm i love posting on linkedin i'm regular not regular i don't know but i don't look at keep looking at how many likes how many followers how many shares don't go for those vanity metrics look at how you can really connect with people go beyond that it might be important to drive marketing especially for entrepreneurs platforms and all that it is important but don't go stop at just that if you have go at your content and go at a personal touch so this is really interesting thing about uh, scott galloway who's a people lot of people would have heard about him he's a professor of marketing and of course he's an big time public speaker a lot of opinions about a lot of things he talks about round the clock brand of uh, brand building round the clock model and if you look at a particular brand if you look at it from a brand point of view not a person point of view he builds it up into three stages there's a pre purchase stage where you have touch points like tv social media your website and all there then at the purchase stage you have your distribution your packaging the content that you deliver and at the post purchase you have your loyalty programs the customer service so every touch point is an opportunity for you to build your brand into something amazing and we need to view of ourselves also like that every interaction is a chance to build a brand and it is round the clock today and that's we just have to acknowledge it that's the way it is uh if you don't want to engage also it's fine you don't need to do it and to that point i want to highlight seth gordon talks about you know choosing your jonases wisely we all try to sometimes try to keep up with the jonases oh they are doing this they are doing that you know the next flashy thing what can we do and we fall into the trap of being running after what others are doing rather than actually curating and creating content for ourselves you don't need to make those comparisons and being when you look at try to keep up with the jonases you're going to just drive yourself nuts and have a burnout rather than look at forcing yourself to create a quality content for yourself and we get brainwashed in some of this so githi i got to quickly stop and ask is there anything else in the chat that's coming up uh, uh, pragya is uh, saying psychological safety a lot of that also drives us totally uh, absolutely at work you know the clear expectations about what we are asked to do i think and that in that the communication has become very key during pandemic you need that clear expectation set you want autonomy you want belonging and you want that psychological safety great point pragya and i would say that go beyond all that lot of you would have seen the skip ad button in uh, youtube videos and everything else people will think about what interests them so invest in relationships and connect in person as much in person as you can otherwise people will skip ad you you're not important enough because there are so many others in the thing and i'm i'm not dismissing people i'm just saying invest in relationships look at don't just look at oh this call this it's transactional go beyond it connect in person as much as possible to unlock opportunities think about how it can help you and go proactively so there's a three step thing that i use which is give share help give your time and attention your expertise your coaching your mentoring so i'm a mentor in so many multiple platforms and i think sometimes it's also because i don't know to say no so that's something that i have to work on myself but give generously share articles share resources share books share blog posts podcasts your thoughts your expertise 
share your successes and share your failures we won't get it right it doesn't matter people will learn from it help others help people wherever you can and i do believe that you know what goes around comes around so look at some of this mm, we have very less time so there's another video so sukirti if uh, i can share this video with I you would, if possible we'll just post it because i'd love to take some audience yes. questions yes yes so let me just you know i'm going to skip this video which is daniel medvedev uh, talking in the australian open remind me and i will share it to you after the session what all these productive accidents has done is given me opportunities to actually connect with people in different parts of the world as we are here today as well and when you go in with the thing of giving sharing helping things come back your way for sure and Roosevelt talks about you know people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So building a brand and influencing is not only about showing up as you who you are. It's also about finding out about who others are, and you can do this in two simple steps. Ask people questions about themselves, and step two, listen to their answers. If you What's show genuine part? interest. <laughs> the listening yeah. part <laughs> the listening part and business storytelling can be an amazing way to just create your great personal brand to engage to inspire to influence there's this very cute saying which a friend of mine mentioned it is by andy goodman it says numbers numb jargon's jar no one marched on washington because of a pie chart we really our data is important but is the stories which drive the insights around the data which really it's it's like almost like the ice cream that you put on top of a brownie it makes the difference and in workplace it helps build authentic connections it drives the quality of your conversations so bring a new dimension to yourself this is again another video which i'll share this is a quick recap of some of the things that we talked about about doing your own thing investing in relationships reframe your think about what is potential ask and listen use storytelling at work bring your whole self and the whole thing on brand building what we talked about round the clock is talk about think about your brand from day 1 and branding manifests itself in everything that you do so live your brand every day bring a new dimension to whatever you do normally people say igikai don't ask what the you know ask what the world wants and where is the intersection that's a great concept but i would just reframe it a little bit to say don't ask what the world needs ask what makes you come alive and then go for it because world needs more people who make it come alive and choose your own path um antonio machado at this poem i absolutely love travelers there is no path the path is made by walking so you make your own path you be yourself and create your personal brand and have a life that you want to leave inspiring others so i'll stop here for now uh, of course i'm on linkedin and on twitter uh, i'll leave the contact details uh, with uh, sukriti along with some of the videos on storytelling as well and i'd love to hear from the audience vita go ahead we'd love to take your question first and everybody anybody else that has questions please do raise your hand or put it in the chat box okay the, uh, good evening everyone uh, sukiti i'm not able to uh, sit on my camera so sorry for no that no worries uh, i think you blocked it or i don't know i'm not able to do it no, oh <laughs> sorry we have not blocked uh you cannot start your video because host has stopped the recording okay. anyways I, i'll go ahead with my question Uh, yeah. uh, so, Sandhuri, I hope I've got the name right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Smita. Lovely to connect with you. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure, you know, listening to you. Uh, but uh, I am slightly disconnected because uh, uh, you know I uh, had had a boss uh, who used to tell me that you know never be yourself uh, because you will be very predictable. You know, I am one person who is very spontaneous. You know, and while I was in the team member role, it was fine. But when I you know had a team under me. So this was the advice she gave me once that uh, you are so predictable and you are so uh, you know honest with people, uh, and she said this doesn't work in a corporate. So she actually mm -hmm. wanted me to not be myself. So what is your take on that? Uh, you know, I mean, I I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
No, thanks, Mita. Thanks for asking that question. I think it's all the the question is making me think, uh, and I don't know the full context, and we may not have the time to you know ask you those questions to find out the full context. Uh, there's this thing about you know when you say bring your whole self. I always add another caveat in this context is bring your whole relevant self. So it is situational, definitely. uh i think we are what we are i am a direct person i am for me lot of things are very black and white i struggle with the grace uh you know so that is me as a person uh if you set the tone with your team to say this is how just for example let's say you're giving feedback and maybe this converse context in the sense of oh you're giving too direct feedback try to think about how you can reframe it to say this is what i meant by mean by when i give feedback this is how i do it to set the context of how you give feedback and then share it so people are then on the same page and aligned and when they still come back to you and say oh that sounded you know very i i'm sure it was not rude but if they say that sounded too direct or rude or whatever think about how you can reframe it so you communicate in a way that is suitable for them and it's useful for them ultimately your objective is to get your team to align with you true so i look at it as a communication thing rather than changing your personality thing maybe thank you for that i hope it helped yeah yeah thank you so much thanks mr other... thanks for asking that any other questions uh, would love to take some more if there are some otherwise we will ask sandri for her closing remarks and we'll wish everyone a great night <laughs> and think I about i see some familiar faces <laughs> yeah i see some familiar faces on the chat in the group now hi hema and hi deepika lovely to see that you joined us today so i think we we i think we've covered the topic so any closing remarks that you would have i think you know <laughs> hi deepika i think uh, we all can be ourselves and our brand sometimes when we use jargons uh, like bring your authentic self and all we tend to get overwhelmed by what we are saying we see people who are saying oh be authentic and then we see that there's a disconnect because they're not necessarily walking the talk or walking the walk on it we can be that difference we can make that change and bring that in and today communication in a online remote world communicating to achieve and maintain alignment among the stakeholders cascading your message across the organization becomes very important and you can do that by creating a brand for yourself and bringing that new dimension to your organization to your workplace to wherever you go you will leave those footprints in the sands of time that way so pragya is asking pragya i would uh, i've asked to unmute you so you could ask it yourself that if you were to time travel do you regret not knowing or doing something you should have done 30 years ago i am not a person who believes in regrets i think all decisions are valid when they are taken and the i don't have any post purchase dissonance and all that at all ever i think any uh, thing in retrospect always looks oh if i had known that that would have been great but we don't know that right and today as we are seeing we are taking decisions for the future based on something that happened in the past and the past is not representative of it i think you just learn from it but you live the life in the moment that's me so certain judgments i'm making about you as i'm looking at your book shelf i see you love to travel so that's the first judgment <laughs> on personal branding that i'm making about you prasanna go ahead i'm just going to ask you to unmute go ahead thanks pragya for asking that um yeah i hear that it was noisy there and you couldn't talk hi sondri that was a Hi, wonderful Krishna. session very Thank nice you. input uh, i just uh, had a query actually uh, yesterday i had got a offer i am actually into academics now but uh, suddenly i got an offer in industry where i was working 5 years back uh, as hr so how do i consider myself as same deliverables like uh, i give on par to my counterparts who is in the same line without uh, having any shift or uh, i'm having a shift from academics to industry so i should quote my salary little less than what uh, my counterparts are getting okay um tough question on uh, so i don't know about your industry and what is the benchmarking whether you've looked at glassdoor and all that 
so i'm not getting into those nitty gritties uh, i think you are bringing a dimension which a lot of others may not be bringing we talk about you know typically people talk about t shaped leadership which is True. like you go deep into a domain and you have an overarching area but today is the time of m shaped so you have a lot of deep inputs in certain areas and how you are able to connect the dots across all this is the strength that you are bringing so sometimes it's great to be audacious audacious and ask for that bigger number uh go for it uh, you know you are bringing so much value which maybe a person who has just been in the industry is not bringing i hope yeah thanks thanks prasanna thanks for asking that well thank you everyone like i said i mean i hope you all will think about those three adjectives that define you and kind of work towards that because it's very very important i'm also thinking about that like i said i'm one that is probably written now already 20 so narrowing down to those 3 to 5 will be the tough part for me so with that we wish you all a very very good night and thank you sandri for being with us and like i said i'm loving the travel and i hope that that comes back soon thank you so says, much I, it was a great session thank you so much for this asmita says thank you so much ma'am smita so thank, thank you all you. so Amitra, much bye. yeah and thanks to your team as well um, to uh, uh, people the background organizing everything as well uh, uh, sukriti and uh, i absolutely enjoyed i know we wanted to do this earlier i'm glad we finally did this session thank you so much and thanks for the great participation i mean any session is comes alive and the fire is there in the session only when people participate so thanks so much for that Thank you all. Have a good night.